guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how many hours per week should you be studying medical coding. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, how many hours? You have a lot of things to study with medical coding, medical billing and coding. Whether you are going through a course or whether you are going through an independent study, it is a lot. We have to know diagnosis coding. We have to know procedure coding. We have to understand evaluation and management. And you have to know about uh, medical terminology, anatomy, and pathophysiology, and, and other things as well. So there's a lot of things that go into learning medical billing and coding. I say a good rule of thumb is to do a minimum of 20 hours per week. Now, before you panic and say, Blue, that's just too much. I have a full-time job. I don't care. <laughs> the reason that I say I don't care is that if you really want to do something, if you really want to do a new career and a career that is, is as intense as medical coding, because think about this, we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. That's a lot. And even if you are working a full 40 hour a week job and, and say you have a family and you're, you're taking care of your family and all of these things, there's everything that you got to do. You can still manage to squirrel in time if you want to, if you, if you make this a priority, it will be a priority because again, there's a lot of things that you have to learn and it's typically in a short amount of time. I tell people don't go into short programs. Um, I recommend nine months, 12 months or 18 months is a good amount of time to learn medical coding because there's so much to learn, right? Um, some people say, well, what about an eight month program? Eight months is a lot better than uh, six months. <laughs> Four months, six months, that's just too freaking fast to learn everything you gotta learn about medical coding. So again, like I say, if you're taking your time to learn the correct way, right? Because a slow way is the fast way. If you learn and you take the time to learn these things, you're not going to feel so lost when you get out into the real world, okay? So taking the time to, to squirrel in 20 hours, and in 20 hours is actually a lot easier to get in uh, to the week than you, than you might think. So let's just, let's just look at uh, basics here, okay? You can do studying in two ways. You can listen and you can, um, you can read, right? Well, and then you can, uh, you can visualize, you can watch videos. Okay. So there's three ways of learning, uh, listening, watching videos or reading. Okay. These are the three ways you can learn, right? And incorporating these and getting yourself set up on a schedule is really good. I always tell people don't go more than one hour at a time. Because if you are going for studying for one hour at a time, your brain has enough time to process everything. And we as adults learn differently from kids, right? Because kids, they can spend hours and hours in school and, and be fine because that is their job. <laughs> their job is to be in school and learn. Us as adults, we have a family to look out for, or even if you don't have a family to look out for, you're looking out for yourself because maybe you're a single person. There's still all the responsibilities that you have to take care of, right? So again, um, getting into this mindset of, okay, there's these three different ways I can learn and I'm going to set myself up on a schedule. Uh, but let's just say, for instance, you work a full 40 hour a week job and you have 30 minute drive in the morning, you have a 30 minute drive in the evening. There is nobody else in the vehicle with you, right? <laughs> let's just say, for example, right? So that is one hour already that you can be listening to something. You can be listening to uh, your coding guidelines. You can read them to yourself. You can record yourself reading them. Then you can listen to them or you know, you could do any anything um, that will help you to retain these coding guidelines. You can um, put the Bluetooth on your vehicle and you can listen to a uh, YouTube um, uh, channel like JJ Medicine. That is JJ Medicine, not J and J. It is JJ Medicine. And they have a plethora of videos about medical terminology and the disease process and anatomy. And you can just listen to these things, right? You can just feed it into your Bluetooth and boom, there you go. 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the, in the afternoon on the way home, there's already one hour. That's five hours over the course of a week that you've already been listening to something, right? 
Okay. Now let's just say that you want to tack on another hour in the evening after the kids have gone to bed or after all your chores are done, right? So that's another hour. That makes 10 hours during the week, right? It just, just that, just that little bit of time, the 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and then one hour. And, and you've already got 10 hours that you've already invested, right? But let's say that you want to do two hours per night, two hours per night. Now that makes it 15 hours during the week, right? And now all you have to do is spend five hours either on Saturday or Sunday or Saturday and Sunday, just, you know, uh, spread out the time and just do a little bit of time here, a little bit of time there, work on flashcards, uh, work on, uh, work on the worksheets and the, in the workbook and everything. And that way you can spread your time out and, and promising yourself that you're going to go for no more than one hour at a time. It makes the challenge of studying a lot more easier to handle because you're not having to sit there and be like, Oh my gosh, I have a two hour study. I got to do, I have a five hour study. I have to do, I'm going to go hard and I'm going to go eight hours. You're not going to retain half of the things that you even, not even 80% of the things that you need to be able to retain. If you're going to try to go that, that long a stretch in, in uh, studying. So again, it's adding all those little times together. And even if it's 30 minutes at a time, even if it's for an hour at a time, it's okay. But getting that time in is, is what is going to help you. Now, just say, for instance, you don't feel like studying that night. You are just tired and, and you just don't want to have to do anything. You had a hard day at work. I understand. I get it. Uh, we just went over to a new electronic medical record. I get it. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> uh, so you don't want to do anything that night. It's okay to take a break. It is okay to take a break. It is all right to not study for the night. It's okay to go ahead and pick it back up in the morning. But you got to pick it back up. Because sometimes people will say, well, I don't feel like doing it today. And then they get it to the next thing. Well, I don't feel like doing it again. And then all of a sudden, a week, two weeks, three weeks passes by, a month passes by. Well, I haven't been studying. Okay, that's why I'm saying, guys, you can do this sparingly. Studying this intensely is not going to last forever. It is only going to be for a very short amount of time when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. The intensity of studying is going to only be for a short amount of time. And then you're going to have your career and then you're still going to have to study, but it is not going to be as intense because you already have your base foundation. Right now, you are trying to learn a new language. You're trying to learn this new language and you're trying to grasp everything. Well, Blue, that's a problem. I can't grasp everything. You're not going to. You're not going to right away. This is why you have to be patient with yourself. You're not going to understand. I, I, I wouldn't be able to walk into an operating room and say, okay, well, I read these notes and uh, yeah, I think I could do this. <laughs> that would be stupid, right? I have to have training. I have to have time in. Just like as, as doctors can't just stroll up in there and say that. They have to have training and that's what they had. And so again, when you're getting into medical coding, now you're like, okay, I'm looking at these charts. I may understand, but it's going to take me time to understand and fully know what's going on. Okay. You can't just, you know, walk into, um, the back of a restaurant and say, Hey, I'm going to start cooking. Cause I'm a chef. You know, I've cooked before I made ramen noodles and yeah, I know how to cook. You, you can't do that. <laughs> so it's going to take you time to get to where you want to get in your profession, but it takes study and it takes you being like, okay, hang up posters. You know, a lot of people will ask me, well, Blue, is this an anatomy thing and the medical terminology? I hate it. Don't hate it. <laughs> it's fun. It's actually fun. And, and I've said it on a couple of other videos, few other videos now. Um, Remember when we were kids and you had the border with the numbers, you know, when you were like in elementary school and, and the teacher had the borders up on the ceiling and, and it was all your letters and your and your numbers and, and then the cursive writing and stuff. And so that you had the constant visual stimulus so that you could be able to remember those things. It made it a lot easier to recall your numbers and your letters because you saw them every day. It's the same thing that you have to do when you're studying for medical coding um, or medical billing and coding, right? <laughs> Whatever the program is called, right? Uh, so in your, in your study area, make sure that you hang up posters of anatomy and so that you can see that every single day, right? And I do have the recommended um, um, Amazon affiliate link for the, for the uh, bundle packs 
of the anatomy posters that you can hang up. You can also uh, download pages from the internet and you can hang them up too if you don't want to buy um, uh, those anatomy cards. That's fine, guys. There's plenty of free resources out there. Trust me, there are so many when you start Googling. And there's a lot of different things out there um, that you can look at. I do have my Patreon channel. Patreon, if you don't know, is a lot like YouTube. But I post uh, exercises on uh, anatomy, medical terminology. I do crossword puzzles. I haven't done a crossword puzzle in a while, but I have been doing word searches because people like the word searches. <laughs> so I will uh, make a puzzle and I will leave the word bank off. So that way people, and I'll tell them this is the theme of this uh, word search. And then they have to find all the words that they can, all the medical terms that they can. And so it's just something fun that I tried to do on my Patreon channel. My link is in the description box below. Right now, the minimum pledge is $10 per month if you're interested. Um, you don't have to pledge past a month, but that $10 will get you access to all the things that I have posted. Okay. Uh, so there's lots of just different ways of learning there. So there's a different thing about just like learning in different ways, not just like I got to look at the book and I got to do exercises in the book. It is about, I'm going to do flashcards. I'm going to write out flashcards so that I can, it can commit to memory better. I'm going to have the posters around so that I can see them. I can see like the anatomy in front of me. Why do you think doctors in their offices have those anatomy posters around? <laughs> yes, it's easier to point out to the patient, hey, yes, this area, this area, but it also helps them to be able to recall because they're having to constantly study as well. Uh, so that is something that, you know, you can consider, think about that, you know, because again, it's only meant to make it easier for you to, to learn and recall these things, reading your coding guidelines once per week. Now in somewhere in this time, if you're listening to the coding guidelines, or if you're reading the coding guidelines, reading the coding guidelines will make you a faster reader. And that my friends is the key and the, and the key to success with these, uh, exams, because you have, uh, if you're taking an AHIMA exam, you have two minutes, roughly two minutes per question. If you're taking an AAPC exam, you have two minutes, 40 seconds per question. And in this time, you gotta be able to read and you gotta be able to comprehend what's going on. And you gotta be able to look at all these things. So in order to do that, you have had to have had time uh, to be reading and getting to be reading faster. Everybody says, I'm a slow reader. I am a slow reader myself, typically. <laughs> but as you get into this and as you study medical coding, you will start to pick up those tricks where you can start to read faster. And like I say, reading those coding guidelines once per week will help you to you know, get that time in uh, to so that you can build up your reading speed. And again, if it's, it's like exercise. You have to be willing to put in the time so that way that you can get faster and you can get better. Uh, but that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. So 20 hours per week, guys, that is a small, small sacrifice in the grand scheme of things to be able to get what you want. Because if you're telling me, oh, Blue, I only spent five hours and you're wasting your time. Blue, I only spent maybe 10 hours. Again, you're wasting your time. 20 hours minimum and not going over one hour at a time will help set you up for success. Because again, um, when you try to cram everything all into one sitting, uh, it's not going to be a good thing. And for those of you who have been out of school for quite some time and you're going back into school, again, it is the same thing. Because you've been out of school for a while, it's hard to pick up these, these habits and then you feel frustrated because you feel like you're not retaining anything. When in actuality, maybe the way that you have set up your study time is not structured, it's not enough time, and you are just trying to do too many things at one time. Yes, you can you can study two subjects simultaneously, right? Um, if you are doing your medical terminology, you can certainly do anatomy at the same time. Or if you are working on um, your ICD-10-CM, you can also work on your CPT at the same time. You're working on CPT, you can certainly work on Higgs picks. And so there's those ways of kind of combining and marrying, right? Uh, those subjects so that, you know, they can feed off each other. There's a synergy that happens when you're having subjects uh, done together, you can kind of feed off of them. Uh, but not spending the time is the surest way uh, to get you to fail. Not spending that time, not spending enough time is the surest way to get you to fail. So if this is what you want to do, 
it is a commitment. It is a commitment to um, getting into this field. It is a commitment to <laughs> learning this field. This is not a easy field for those that think it, oh yeah, so easy. And, and maybe your recruiter told you that it was easy. It's not easy guys, but it, it's not impossible. So that's the thing to, that's the bright side is that it's not impossible, that it just takes a little bit of effort and actually takes a lot of effort, but <laughs> uh, we all know what I mean, right? It takes effort to be able to learn this. And when you are committed and when you have, you know, your area set up where you're, you're making this time to study and you're doing the study like you're supposed to, and you are not letting anything or anybody get in your way. Sometimes people will say, well, Blue, my kids are always bothering me when I'm trying to study. Okay, if they're trying to bother you, all right, tell them, let's, let's play a game then. Um, I'm going to give you these flashcards to hold up and you're going to, you're going to test this with me. Uh, I guarantee you either they're going to be so happy that you ask them to help that they will help you or they'll be like, uh, yeah, never mind. Uh, I'll go and do my own thing. <laughs> and, and whatever, whatever age they are, you know, guys, they're going to do, the kids are going to do what kids want to do. Okay. But when you make it a point of, Hey, this is serious. This is not where I'm just going to, you know, Oh, if, if they want to spend time with you, you will have time for them and you can make time for them because it really investing an hour only at a time and then taking a break and doing whatever that's not going to affect them. You know, they, they can be on their own to do things by themselves. I mean, obviously if, given they're old enough, right? Uh, <laughs> if they're babies, that's something different. Okay. Uh, but if they're old enough, you know, cause I've heard of, I've heard from mothers. I, I have a, quite a few mothers who write me and they will say, well, Blue, you know, I just feel so guilty. I feel so bad. And they go, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm abandoning my kids when I'm studying. And I'm like, you're not abandoning your kids. And I'm like, how old are your kids? 12, 13, 14, 15, come on. And they go, well, you know, if they're hungry, they can make themselves a sandwich. If they're hungry, they can make themselves a sandwich. It's not going to hurt them. They can eat cereal. It's not going to hurt them, okay? Uh, if they're really that hungry. That I mean, at 12, 13, 14, 15, they really should know how to cook basic things, but that's a that's an episode for a different time. Um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, parents don't feel guilty about doing something um, that's going to build a better life for your kids and yourself, okay? Because eventually your kids are going to leave and they're going to start their own lives. They're going to go out in the real world. They're going to go to college or they're going to go to a trade school. Nothing wrong with trade schools, folks. Um, and, or they're going to go off and, and get married and, and do their own thing. You know, you have to think about you. I mean, time that we have in this life is very limited. And while it may be like, well, this person lived years and they lived to be 80, 90 years old, you know, that's awesome. Right. Uh, it goes by like that. And you ask anybody who's in their eighties and nineties, they'll tell you life went by quick. It went by quick. And so if you are wanting to get into this because it's something that you want to do, it's, some, it's a career field that you want to get into, commit, commit to it, commit to it, get in it, study, study for no more than one hour at a time, study for a minimum of 20 hours per week and get in there and get what you want. Because that's, you know, that's the whole thing about goals, guys. You can meet them, but you have to do the work. That's all I'm saying. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Best of luck to you on your studies. And don't burn yourselves out, guys. But do stay on the schedule. I'm just saying. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if it helped you. And I will see you all next time. Bye.